Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Sergey, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Luxembourg. And uh, this work is a collaboration with SmartNet Company, and uh, Ivan Ivanitsky is from, uh, from their company. So we're going to present you with our project, which is called SmartCheck. Uh, this is a static analyzer of Ethereum smart contracts. So first of all, I will provide a brief introduction. Um, I will skip over it because in the introductory talk, uh, all the necessary prerequisites were given, what is Ethereum and smart contracts and so on. And then I will provide our classification of Ethereum code issues and vulnerabilities that we uh, also present in the paper. Uh, then uh, Ivan will present the tool itself, what techniques we use to automatically detect bugs and uh, some other issues in the code, and some future work and state of the project. So the introduction. Um, our goal is to find bugs, to help developers find bugs that can potentially cost millions and millions of dollars. So as uh, was, it was mentioned earlier, that um, it's, a, it's a novel field in software engineering in general, and uh, this is a revolu revolutionary new way to enforce digital agreements. And Ethereum is the most uh, popular and the most uh, successful, at least to date, implementation of this idea. That's why we're focused on Ethereum smart contracts. Bugs can be exploited, and they have been exploited, and uh, many millions of dollars were lost. So our goal is to help solve this problem. So um, Ethereum is a peer-to-peer -peer network which is comprised of nodes, which do computation, which store smart contracts, they store data, and maintain a shared view of the global state using a proof work consensus mechanism. Uh, so this is some of the security challenges that we outline, uh, the decentralized execution environment, the code is executed on this network, and the members of this network may have their own motivations, may have their own uh, reasons to run the code one way or another. The software stack is developed from scratch, this is not a fork of Bitcoin, it was developed from scratch including the compiler, the virtual machine, uh, the networking functionality, and of course there might be bugs also in these implementations. Um, as mentioned earlier, bugs cannot be fixed if the contract is deployed, and the attackers, um, it's much easier for attackers compared to other, say, types of cybercrime, like an identity theft or uh, credit card fraud or something. Uh, it's much more easier for the attackers to remain anonymous and to immediately monetize their findings, their exploits. Uh, and the space is developing very rapidly. Um, people are not paying enough attention to security, and bugs can still be found in the production. And the high-level language Solidity, which is the de facto standard high-level language, uh, is also uh, suboptimal, at least in some regards, for this task. So this is our classification of issues. We divide the issues that we uh, discovered and described in our research into four categories. The first one, and the most crucial one, is security issues, security vulnerabilities. These are the issues that directly can lead to exploits and to loss of funds. And um, in, uh, in the code analysis, we advise developers to fix these critical issues immediately, as soon as possible. Uh, functional issues are issues that may in other ways violate the intended functionality of the smart contract, though um, it should be noticed that in the real world, uh, developers very rarely provide, uh, provide us or provide the users with the um, independent uh, specification of what they were actually trying to achieve with the code. That's why in many cases we can just guess what their intent was, but in many cases it is obvious that some functionality is not intended. Operational issues may lead to problems in runtime, to performance problems that will be described later when I go to examples of issues. And developmental issues um, uh, prevent or make development of the code harder. So uh, now I will, describe, uh, I will describe three of these categories using examples. So we will focus on three very important and popular or infamous uh, vulnerabilities, namely reentrancy, which is a security issue, a very important one. Uh, the second issue is what we call blocked money, and we consider it to be a functional issue. And the third one is called costly loop, and uh, this may be considered an operational issue. So inside the smart check tool, uh, we have rules for 21 types of issues, and many rules include many uh, separate patterns. Uh, but here we'll focus on three of them. So reentrancy is probably the most, the most famous type of bug in Ethereum. So the setup goes like this. So imagine we have a smart contract that maintains an internal list of balances. This might be some kind of investment fund, and investors come and invest Ether, and the contract must remember who invested how much money. So uh, here in the mapping, uh, we store the balances of the users. So a user uh, has the right to withdraw their funds. Um, in order to do that, the user issues a special transaction. So in this example of vulnerable code, uh, in this line, the money is sent back to the user, and then the balance of the user is updated to zero. 
The problem with this code is that an adversary can use a specially uh, created malicious smart contract to, um, to request withdrawal from that contract. And this malicious smart contract can recursively call back this vulnerable uh, caller contract. And because the balance has, uh, has not yet been updated, but the recursive call goes again to this line, um, Ether will be sent again and again to the attacker, uh, and the balance is not yet updated. So um, the attacker can go deep into the call stack and withdraw, uh, de uh, deplete the balance of the contract uh, on expense of other users while the balance is not yet updated. This is the uh, issue that led to the DAO hack, the DAO exploit in 2016, and around $50 million were lost. This is arguably the first major hack of an Ethereum smart contract. Uh, the second example is a bit more concise. We call it locked money, and the um, it goes like this. So if a contract can technically receive money, if a contract has payable functions, uh, we think that there must be some way that this money will get out of this contract somehow. Maybe to this user, maybe to some other addresses, but uh, we don't think it is, um, we don't think the developers actually intended to implement the contract that just eats the money and uh, does nothing with that. Uh, so we are looking in uh, the smart check text uh, if a contract is payable, if it has at least one, uh, one usage of functions like transfer or send or call.value. These are all the functions that are used to transfer Ether. Transfer is the preferable way, by the way, to transfer Ether. Uh, but if the contract has none of them, we consider it to be a mistake and we flag it as suspicious behavior. And the third example is um, what we call costly loop. So here the setup goes like this. So imagine a contract with a number of users. And um, yeah, so as mentioned earlier, users must pay in terms of gas for the computations and the transactions are atomic. So even uh, if one step fails during the execution of the transaction, then all the effects of the transaction are averted and uh, it basically doesn't have any effect on the state of the network. And miners enforce a block gas limit. That means that uh, the total amount of, computational, of, of computation inside one transaction is also limited. So uh, if we have, uh, as, in, as in this code example, if we have a loop through the array, uh, if the length of uh, the array is big enough, or we don't know it in advance, or if the function that we execute inside the loop is costly, uh, that means that the total, um, the total amount of gas required to execute this piece of code can be higher than the block gas limit. If this happens, that, uh, that means that this transaction can never be confirmed. And a bad use case could be, again, if the contract is performing some kind of payouts for users, for example, for the winners of some lottery or some game, uh, if even one payout fails, then everything fails, and none of the users can withdraw their funds. So um, this is a mistake, obviously, and uh, developers should deal with this situation, either remember who was actually, um, who actually received the payout and who did not, to separate this functionality into multiple transactions, or even better, um, instead of sending, in, instead of the push mechanism, use the pull mechanism. Not send Ether to the users, but let users withdraw their funds. And then every user will pay gas fee, and it will be uh, much more secure in this regard. So now I will um, uh, give the stage to Ivan. He will present our two. Thank you, Sergei. Hi, folks. Before um, we talk about smart check, let's discuss static uh, analysis in general. So when we talk about code analysis, uh, first we need to choose between dynamic analysis and static analysis. So let's describe some of the features. If we talk about uh, dynamic code analysis, it works uh, as a black box. So it doesn't see the source code itself. It just interacts uh, with the code from the outside. Uh, second, it has no false positives because uh, all the findings that it gives us, they're all uh, real exploits uh, just because it works uh, with the uh, executable code. It just executes uh, the exploits. So, and the third one is that uh, some code execution paths uh, might be missed, uh, which means that uh, some of uh, constructions uh, which are the source code, they won't be analyzed. Uh, since the uh, analyzer does not see the source code, it uh, just interacts from the outside and might uh, not execute some of the uh, parts of code. On the other hand, static code analysis, it works as a white box, it uh, sees all the source code. Um, second, it uh, always produces some false positives because some uh, code constructions which are in fact insecure, in some co uh, contexts they might lead to vulnerabilities and in some contexts they might not uh, lead to vulnerabilities and uh, in uh, many cases uh, differentiate between these two situations only a human can do that. 
And uh, third, it uh, analyzes all the code since it sees uh, and works with the source code. Okay, uh, if we talk about smart contracts code analysis, we have uh, the following differences from the uh, usual code analysis, for instance, uh, from the uh, web applications code analysis. The first um, important difference is that smart contracts code uh, is immutable. So if you have some vulnerability uh, and you have deployed your code, uh, this vulnerability is there forever. Second, it uh, is a self bug bounty because all the attackers are financially motivated. If in case of uh, web applications, an attacker needs to find some way to monetize, uh, for instance, some private data that he or she has retrieved. Uh, in case of smart contracts, uh, he or she gets value instantly. Tokens, ethers, however, uh, and and the third one is uh, that all the code is crucial because any line of code in case of um, smart contracts can uh, lead to um, loss of funds. And in case of web applications, we uh, usually focus on some you know, important uh, parts of code like uh, authorization, some work with private data and so on. So uh, not all the code is crucial. On the other hand, smart contracts are easier to analyze because they are um, have much less code. It's like uh, 500 or 1,000 lines of code in case of smart contracts versus uh, hundreds of thousands lines of code in, in case of web applications. Uh, so if we go to previous slide and consider all these things, we can come to a conclusion that in case of smart contracts, we should prefer static analysis because uh, false positives does not bother us because there won't be plenty of them since the code is not very big on the one hand, and on the other hand, we uh, don't want to miss any vulnerabilities and miss any uh, code execution paths. So, we choose static analysis. Um, in general, static code analysis uh, includes the following steps. Uh, first, since we work with uh, source code, and source code is just a text for a machine, we need to build uh, some uh, intermediate representation with which uh, the machine will further work. Uh, second, we might want to enrich this uh, representation with uh, some information like uh, values of the variables, um, maybe uh, types, and so on. And third, after we have code in an intermediate representation uh, enriched with uh, some information, we uh, want to detect vulnerabilities. Okay, how does Smart Check perform this work? Uh, we use ANTA parser generator, uh, which we give our custom Solidity grammar. I say custom because we have taken some open source grammar, and after that we needed to perform some uh, major changes, so now it's uh, more like custom. And uh, after ANTA generates uh, pass tree, we apply some XPath uh, cures to that uh, XML pass tree, uh, which uh, detect specific uh, constructions in code, uh, and in our case these constructions are vulnerabilities. And uh, the parse tree, it looks like this. So here we have uh, the construction like uh, this balance is compared to some number. And uh, this construction is uh, in some cases insecure, so uh, we uh, create an XPath uh, query to this uh, XML tree and detect such constructions. Okay, let's go to some real world examples. We have scanned uh, with uh, smart check uh, like 4,600 uh, smart contracts for just for statistics, and we found the following vulnerabilities. It's not the whole list. Here we have only uh, high severity and medium severity vulnerabilities. The low severity are omitted. So what can we see here? We can see first that re-entrancing vulnerability, uh, vulnerability which is very well known and very dangerous, it can be uh, seen in. Uh, in average in almost every contract. So uh, here we talk about uh, uh, all the contracts that we uh, have found on either scan. So it includes both contracts that were created before uh, the DAO exploit. So uh, people uh, didn't know about reemptancy then. However, it also includes new contracts. So new contracts uh, has this vulnerability too. And uh, also we can see that, for instance, DOS by external contract uh, is very popular times the independence is very popular. So uh, if uh, one is a smart contract developer, 
Here she might want to, to use SmartCheck to detect all these insecure constructions and to make code more secure, more beautiful, and so on. Okay, now let's say a few words about future work and the current state of the project. Um, so, uh, comparing to the uh, released, uh, described in the paper version of SmartCheck, uh, we uh, wanted to perform the following uh, improvements. First, we uh, wanted to improve the grammar, since uh, the grammar uh, was not, was not uh, like um, perfect. Some code constructions are still not parsed. And uh, also the language uh, it, uh, uh, is being developed, thus uh, we need to change the grammar too. Uh, second, we need uh, uh, to make patterns more precise, because uh, although we do not uh, suffer from uh, false positives badly, we still uh, want to reduce the number of false positives. Third, uh, the third task is to add new patterns to detect more insecure constructions. The fourth one is to implement more sophisticated static analysis methods uh, like uh, maybe a flag propagation, like uh, um, cross procedure analysis, and so on. And the third one is to, uh, and the last one is to add a support for other, for other languages. Uh, Smart Check Engine um, gives possibility to add new languages pretty easily. Uh, so if uh, some other smart contracts languages become uh, popular and uh, used, we will add new languages. So, uh, compared to the uh, version of SmartCheck described in uh, the paper, uh, since uh, the paper we have also made some uh, changes. Uh, the first version, which is uh, described in the paper, it can be uh, found uh, at the following link. It's uh, open source and GPL-3. Uh, the second version, uh, it unfortunately can be open source, but we uh, give it on tool.smartdeck.net uh, for the community just to use to scan uh, smart project, uh, smart contracts, and to uh, find vulnerabilities. Uh, and for now, we have like 100 scans, scans per day, and uh, uh, more uh, more than 4,000 scans uh, done. So. I think that's it. So if you have any questions, we will be glad to answer them. I have one. I read your paper, I really like it. But my question is more like, because some of the development issues, I thought they were really, I don't know if, like you said, if they are really bugs or not. Because like when you said in the paper, like the private modifier. Private modifier is not, does not make variable invisible. I know that, and why not put a private there in my contract? I know what I'm doing, so mm -hmm. do not be an issue. Mm -hmm. But there are two flags as an issue, so don't you think like some of those development issues are kind of like, I don't know, that they might be a little overzealous on that point? Uh, yes, maybe, maybe. In uh, the new version, we're going to add uh, a uh, checkbox to detect only uh, severe vulnerabilities okay. to omit all the, uh, you know, uh, warnings. And uh, also, if we talk about uh, private modifier, uh, we uh, we do not uh, create all the um, all the vulnerabilities rules by uh, we, we uh, do not create all the vulnerabilities uh, descriptions by ourselves. We uh, take uh, some from the community, and uh, in some uh, in some article, this was considered uh, uh, insecure. Thus, we put it there. Maybe in further versions, we will. Uh, delete it from there since uh, since it's not a really big problem. Yeah, because like I said, the warning will be better because like like I said, sometimes people don't know that private in Solid does not mean private like in mm -hmm. regular like C++ or Java programming. But some people do know that, so they might be using the correct way or not. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. a release to me that was, but nice, the idea to check well, boxes. It, it there, might yeah. be a good thing if it inspires someone to read the documentation. Yeah, okay. More like a warning than actually a vulnerability. <coughs> anyway, we put it in low severity, and uh, in this case, maybe it's better to like over uh, be over cautious for, for this specific domain. Yeah, a warning, uh, so like like sure. because if flagging as a vulnerability is kind of really harsh to me, like say the private. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's an, is an issue, uh, a low a low level issue. Okay. Other questions? Uh, how does your tool compare to other existing tools? I mean, did you check uh, whether there are existing tools for security checking or 
analyzing uh, smart contracts because as far as I know there are some uh, such tools so are these checks unique uh, no, actually, we, uh, or better? Yeah, so actually, yeah, we, we did this, um, this comparison in the paper. Uh, we have a, a section dedicated to uh, comparing our tool with uh, multiple available tools with uh, checks that are built in, in, in the Remix compiler in the, um, with the Securify and uh, also uh, Orient. Uh, so they uh, use uh, various techniques. So uh, our at least our measurements show that that smart check is superior to, to these tools. <coughs> Though we cannot fully evaluate, for example, Securify because it's only available as a web service and the full uh, the full um, the full uh, database of their patterns is not available. It's not freely available at least. Uh, but uh, according to our evaluation, uh, we perform better. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, these tools. But they do provide such kind of checks. Uh, not, I mean, uh, at, at least from my understanding, what we did is that we um, did the research and we summarized the information about the um, about bugs and vulnerabilities from many different sources, and we accumulated all the kind of state of the knowledge in the, in this sphere. And uh, as far as I understand, the existing tools uh, they uh, they don't have this full coverage, so to say. Actually, if we talk about comparison, we need to make several points here. First, uh, yes, we uh, made this comparison, but uh, uh, this is not an independent comparison, so it can be. So, uh, we like SmartCheck, and we, uh, even even unconsciously, we try to uh, make the comparison. I, I, I was just know. asking whether there are such yes, tools. Uh, the, uh, the sure, yes, there are other tools. The second thing is uh, that there are different tools, and they use different techniques, and they have different uh, vulnerability spaces. Um, first, because they use different techniques, and some vulnerabilities can be detected, for instance, by SmartCheck and cannot be detected by others, and vice versa. Uh, and the third thing is that uh, what, uh, if one is a smart contract developer, um, <clears throat> one will not face any difficulties using all the tools, since uh, all these tools are uh, f right now free and available. And uh, if uh, we need to use just one, uh, I would recommend using SmartCheck, but uh, in general, I would recommend using all of them since they are, uh, you know, vulnerabilities that they uh, look for. They are like this. So okay. yeah. Some can yeah. be found by both. Them. Some can be found only by one. Yeah, I, I might also add uh, to, to this question that um, so developers write contracts in high-level language. They are compiled to bytecode, and bytecode is actually deployed and actually executed. So some tools like SmartCheck analyze the source code, the solution source code, and some other tools analyze the bytecode. So these tools can be actually complementary. So some issues are better found in the source code, some in the byte code. So it's better to use all available options. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.